Hey, Scary Terry, why do you even care about what color cast your light comes out with? I mean, you only have 37 subscribers, who cares about this channel? Alright, so this problem happens when you have cheap LED lights like me because you're just starting out, you don't have a lot of money. If you had a lot of money, you could just buy better lights like the 120D and you wouldn't need to watch this video anymore. This problem happens because LED lights that are cheap usually have a magenta or green tint. It just makes things harder to fix in post-production when your lights have a magenta or green tint, especially when you're mixing kind of some tungsten lights, some warmer lights you have in the background. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is find the appropriate color temperature of your lights. Usually this will come in the packaging or the instruction manual. These lights that I have are at 5600 and so what you do next is you set the color temperature of the camera, the white balance, to that same level. And then you take a photo of it against the wall. Make sure you take a photo of it against the white background. Ideally, if you want to have a foam board that's pure white, that's the best. Because you want it to reflect off a pure white surface. So next what you want to do is take this into Photoshop and blast the saturation. And now you'll be able to see if you have a magenta or a green tint. Like I said before, I have a magenta tint. It looks super ugly as you can see in this photo here. All right, so the next question is what strength of a filter do you need? Uh, they usually come in half a fourth or one eighth. I recommend starting at one eighth because you can double it up. When you double up to two eighth, that equals one fourth. And you can have more flexibility going up and going down because if you get a one fourth or a half, that's too much, you can't go down. But if you have smaller denominations, you can double those up into a higher level. So what I did was I got a fourth, a half and a one eighth just so I can have the flexibility to test all three, which one was the right amount I needed. So basically what you do is you put the filter on the light, repeat step three, take a photo of it, put it into Photoshop and blast it. And here's what it looks like with all three. So you can see the half plus green was way too much here. The one fourth is okay, but it's a little bit green tint. One eighth really is kind of the sweet spot. And that's what are on these lights right now. So what you can do after you find the right size, is you're gonna cut it to the light and then put it on there with like electrical tape or something else and then cover it over the light and then you're good to go. And one thing I also found helpful is that if you're gonna take these off, use a Sharpie to write on the corner of the filter, what strength this is, what light it's for. That way when you take it out later, you put it back on, you kind of know what it's for. You don't be like, hmm, was this a half, a fourth or one eighth? Right, so each of these filters, whether it's the half, the fourth or one eighth costs around six or seven dollars. I know you can get like a whole set. If you only need green or minus green, just get these individually. Size wise, they come in around 20 inches by 24 inches. It's typically the size of a sheet. It's probably like this big. And what happens is if your lights aren't that big, one sheet is enough for two lights. If you just cut it up right and you measure everything correctly. All right, so hope that was helpful. We'll see you guys next time.